chapter 96, the header. The care of nature and all of its environs shall be a priority during the millennium. The earth will be restored to a state similar to the Garden of Eden. 1. And it shall come to pass that the Lord shall begin to once again restore the earth to its natural state in which it existed at the time Adam and Eve were placed in the Garden of Eden, even at the time when death did not exist among all the creations of the earth. 2. For behold, the reproductive process of all the orders of the animals of the earth shall be changed to conform to the plan of the Father. For behold, if the animals were allowed to reproduce and create offspring, and there were no more of those animals that eat their flesh to curtail the increase in their population, then this order of creatures would overrun the earth, and there would be no place left for the children of men. 3. Therefore, at that day the creatures of the earth will become eternal in their nature, or in other words, by the same means that our bodies shall grow to maturity and never age, so shall it be among all the creatures of the earth. 4. And all the creatures shall live in the environment that shall provide for them the joy that they have been programmed by their instincts to desire. 5. For behold, all creatures shall exist for the joy and happiness of the children of God, as this is the purpose for which they were created. 6. And many of the animals that shall be upon the earth shall serve the children of God, and these animals shall provide instinctual devotion and love for all the children of God, even like unto that which a man receiveth from the animals that he hath established as his pets. 7. And it shall come to pass that throughout all of the earth the orders of all animals shall be protected by the power and the word of the Lord. 8. And the insects shall continue to do that which they have been designed to do, for the benefit of the plants which they aid in the process of their existence. And those insects that do not benefit a plant shall be changed in their nature, and reprogrammed in their instinct that they might serve the happiness of man, and not cause affliction upon him, or they shall be taken off of the earth, because they are no longer needed thereupon. 9. For behold, it is in the wisdom of the Father that nature is maintained in a balance, and an order that alloweth it to fulfil the measure of its creation in all things. 10. And now, I have somewhat to say unto you concerning the manner in which the animals and creatures of the earth are created. 11. Behold, for the pleasure, and at times, for the humour of the Father were these things created and placed upon the earth to perform their individual functions within the order of nature, and according to the instincts which God gave unto them to maintain a perfect balance. 12. And when the Father createth one of these, he patterneth it after the desires of his heart, which oft times are influenced by his happiness, that includeth a humorous side that he hath demonstrated by example in the spirits that he hath given to all of his children. 13. And nature is set up for his enjoyment, after it has served the purpose of fulfilling the needs of happiness of his children. 14. Now, if ye were to watch carefully the animals that go about their daily lives upon the earth, ye would see the way that they have been programmed in their instincts according to the good will and humour of the Father. 15. And in your observations of many of these animals, ye would come to know your father better. 16. And the plants, and the flowers, and the vines, and the mosses, yea, even all of the beautiful verdant areas of the world have been organized and contrasted according to the power and the will of the father. 17. And in all these things he obeyeth the eternal laws of nature which govern these things. 18. Behold, I have said that it is by the power and the will of the Father, but in most cases it is not his will that is being done in these things. For behold, our eternal mothers are those whose concepts and understanding of the beauty of nature surpass the interest of the Father in these things. 19. And it is these blessed eternal mothers who many times give their opinions, 
and advice to the Father on the way in which the earth and its order of nature should be organized to bring to pass a state of beauty and wonder that shall bring happiness to their children. 20. For the power to accomplish these things resideth in the Father, but the way in which these things are accomplished is greatly influenced and overseen by our eternal mothers. 21. And it shall come to pass during the millennial days of the Lord, that he shall counsel with many of the women of the world, and also those who have no gender, but who have the desires to beautify and decorate the world with plants and flowers, and with the creatures that share the environs of the earth. Yea, he shall counsel with these concerning the way in which they would have him restore the earth in all of its natural beauty and glory. 22. And the words of the brother of Jared describe the greatness and beauty of the world after the Lord hath once again restored it to its original state. And he wrote, saying, The waters upon the earth once again run pure and undefiled, from the mountain tops where they are spawned, to the great oceans of the earth, where they provide life and refreshment to all the creatures of the earth. 23. And these great oceans shall once again be filled with undefiled and pure water that shall give life unto all creatures upon the earth. 24. And there are wide areas of verdant lands that are lush with all manner of vegetation and flowers, which give beauty and provide food for the creatures of the earth. 25. And there shall be few deserts and places of desolation upon the earth, except it be in a few areas that are within the borders of the land called Telestial Sun, because of the desires of happiness of the citizens of this nation. 26. And the birds of the air fly aimlessly throughout the heavens in search of the desires of their happiness. And these are beautiful birds, made especially for the eye to behold, and for the hand to touch, and caress, and admire in the order of their creation. 27. And I saw the fish of the great waters, that were changed by the Lord to swim openly upon all the waters of the earth. And the inhabitants of the earth in all of the kingdoms swim with the fishes of the waters, and they also fly in the air with the birds after the manner of the technology that the Lord giveth unto those with this desire, so that they might experience this thing and have joy therein. 28. And the grasses that grow in the vast lands of the earth are soft and supple and are created to bring joy to the animals that seek nourishment from them. And these are also enjoyed by those who run thereon with no covering upon their feet, enjoying the softness and gentleness of their touch upon the flesh. 29. And the sight which I beheld was of such an astounding sight, that I wept in joy for the greatness of the blessings of the Father, in providing this order of nature in all of its glory for the benefit of his children. 30. And I marveled at the sight which I beheld, and the Lord smiled upon me, and looked upon me in the countenance of his smile, and spoke unto me, saying, Behold, my beloved brother, this is the glory of the Father in its fullness. 31. And in this glory hath he provided these wonderful blessings for all of his children. Behold, blessed be the Father in this thing for what he hath done for all those who believe in him and keep his commandments. 32. Behold, by him is the nature and order of all things established for our sake and our happiness, and by him shall all things be given unto us for ever in the worlds which he hath created for us. 33. And the glory and honor and thanksgiving be given to him for ever. 34. And it came to pass that the brother of Jared smiled with the Lord as he observed the wonderful blessings of nature that would come to pass during the last millennium of the Lord. 35. And now I, Moroni, cannot write all of the words of the brother of Jared which he saw concerning these things. But his description caused me to fall to my knees and rejoice in my soul with exceeding joy because of those things which I read concerning the millennial reign of the Lord.
36. For behold, never hath there been upon the earth, nor shall there ever be upon the earth until that time, the wonderful and fascinating blessings of nature which God hath provided for us. End of chapter 96.